sevens, seven, or the sevens or not, they don't add those very well. And they start thinking about, that. Is that an accounting strategy? No, but it's an added, skip counting, sounds like counting, but it's not. It's an additive strategy. But wait, seven times eight is not addition, it's multiplication. I need kids thinking multiplicatively. So then I want to do problem streams like we just did to build that multiplicative thinking. You've got to have kids thinking uh, multiplicatively past multiplication. In order to think about division, they've got to be thinking multiplicatively. Middle school teachers, in order to think proportionally, I've got to have kids thinking multiplicatively. So you might go like this right now. Bing. That's why it's so hard to have my kids reason proportionally. And yay, barely, I'm going to suggest it is. I need kids thinking multiplicatively in order for them to reason proportionally. And then as a high school teacher, I need them reasoning proportionally in order for them to reason about functions, which is where I want them as we continue to progress. So a big, huge bet that I have is we've got to help kids move through these. What I'm not suggesting is that you say to your, pick a class, eighth grade class come Monday morning. All right, you guys can't think proportionally, so we're going to stop right now. We're going to go back to addition, and we're going to think about additive strategies. But I am suggesting that you could do addition problem streams in your class that lean into what you're teaching that day, build your students' numeracy to go from counting to additive thinking, while you actually move into the math of the day that you're working on. Let me give you a couple more examples of that. I told some of you earlier, I'm not going to actually do much more addition. I might do a little bit more at the end if we have some time. But I am going to work a lot on building from additive thinking to multiplicative thinking and from multiplicative thinking to proportional reasoning. What does that look like? Not going to do so much of the other. I am going to go from proportional reasoning to um, function reasoning this afternoon. So if you're interested in that, you can stay tuned too. All right, so just briefly, then I'm going to do a couple more strings. Mm -hmm. What I used to think mathematics was is on the left hand side. I used to think it was a bunch of things to do that it was a set of procedures, that I memorized someone else's procedures. I had very sparse brain structure. I only had one and only one connection between those neurons. I don't want sparse brain structure. I want dense brain structure. I want to have lots of connections. When you say seven times eight, I want to be able to come up with lots of different ways to think about seven times eight, because I want to use different ones in different situations. So I want to have a dense brain structure. I'm going to create shirts, so go ahead and do that thing. Get on my website, subscribe, and when we get when the shirts actually come out, I promise a newsletter will come out. It'll say, buy your shirt now, because the shirts are going to say, math is figure out all. Yay! And on the back, it's going to say, it has a picture of a brain, and it says, sparse versus dense brain structure. Be dense. <laughs> Isn't that great? All right, all right. So those are, they're, they're actually designed and everything. They're almost, I was going to wear it today. They're not quite three. Anyway, so hang into that. Um, I used to think it was a bunch of rote memory, like singing and rapping and stuff. If you're singing and rapping to things that we should build in connections, then I caution you from that. Sing and rap for stuff that's social, that's convention, that we've decided it's that way. That somebody said, we're going to call a triangle a triangle instead of a triagon. Or a three-agon. Shouldn't a triangle be called, like, right, pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, septagon? Shouldn't a triangle be called a trigon? Yeah. Shouldn't a quadrilateral be called a quadigon? I don't know. So those things that somebody weird random decided that it was going to be that way, of course we have to memorize those kinds of things. But I'm here to suggest that set, if this is the set of all things that we want kids to learn in math, the set of things that need to be memorized is much smaller than we ever thought it was. Because it, they can actually be understood and built by connections in, their, in our brains. So I used to think it was a bunch of series of steps, and that when you got to the end of the problem, you sort of read off the answer. In other words, I performed these procedures in a series of steps, and I got to the end, and I was like, whoa, that's the answer, who knew? Like, we were sort of surprised <laughs> that that's what it was. Because we weren't intimately involved in the relationships all the way through. We were just doing a bunch of stuff we memorized. What I want to do is, what, is be cognitively involved. So now I'm, I'm skipping sort of on the other side of my little thing up here. I, I, oh, sorry, I got it. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> go away. Make it go. Oh, there, thank you. I want to be cognitively involved the whole time. In other words, when I want to, when I get to the end of the problem, I'm, I'm, when we did 8 times 59, you guys knew per year what it was because you'd already thought about 8 times 60, right? 68. So you thought about 68 as being 480. So 59 eights didn't surprise you. You were cognitively involved the entire time you were solving that problem. I want that at all costs. I don't want kids to just sort of read off the answer when they get to the end. I want them cognitively involved. So I now think that mathematics is much more about relationships and connections. I want dense brain structure. I want to reason. Think about the process standards, the new process standards that we have. 
I want to be reasoning, cognitively involved all the time, schematizing, building schema in my head. I'm not memorizing someone else's schema. That's sparse. I want to build my own schema. Structuring and Kathy Clausen's word, I want to be mathematizing. All right, so some of you guys have heard me do the sticks and gum thing, and I'm going to do that really quickly. Um, but instead of maybe gum, what do you guys want to do? If, I, if you were to go to the store and buy something that had 17 things, what, oh, but that's not organized in any way. What, what, like it's in a bag, a box, Skittles. Or a, Skittles is a perfect example. Can you picture 17 Skittles in one of those little packs? Yeah, yeah should we do Skittles this morning? You know, I don't really like Skittles. m and are much better. But anyway, <laughs> look, we can do Skittles. I'm gonna put the lid back on my thing. Oh, and I'm dropping papers. Hang on, sorry. Okay. I'm blaming the youth camp while we do. All right, so <laughs> this microphone is gonna make me nuts. It's probably making you nuts or Nuts or Thanks for letting me make up that word. Okay, so you just said that Skittles might have, so in a bag of Skittles, I might have, skid, thank you, you see it now? Yeah. Excellent. So in a bag of Skittles, I might have 17 Skittles, yeah? So how many Skittles would I have in two bags? And do me a favor, and before you yell it out, just take a breath, and then yell it out, because that's gonna let the me's in the room, who are a little slower than some of you, actually think. Because when you yell out, Get, yell out the answer that fast, my brain goes, dang, I didn't even have a chance to think about that. Shut up. <laughs> so I'm going to also challenge you that in your classrooms, that you're going to keep the yous in the room that are that quick. Yes. A little bit, get a little bit of a pause. Make them pause just a little bit so that everybody in the room has a chance to engage their brain. The, the me's in the room. I am the, little, the slower one in the room. Even though I didn't look like it when I was wrote memorizing, when I'm actually creating connections and thinking, I'm a little bit slower than some of you. That's okay. By the way, have you heard of Joe Bowler? Joe Bowler, gal out of Stanford, that's actually sort of making a name these days lately. And her big, one of her big shifts is depth versus speed. And I like that. I like that a lot. In fact, she quotes Lawrence Schwartz, who you don't care or don't know about. But Lawrence Schwartz says, "When I was in 11th grade, I thought I was dumb. When I was in, in elementary school, I knew I was the slowest." Man in the room. So I figured I was not a good math person, but I kind of liked it, so I kept at it. And when I was a junior, I realized I was really dumb. But after, slightly after that, he rethought and said, you know what, actually, I don't think so much. I don't think I'm dumb. I think I just like to make connections, and it takes me a little bit longer. So I think it's okay that I take a little bit longer. Well, Lauren Schwartz happens to be a field medal awarder. That means he's a mathematician by trade. That's his job. And he's here to say that it's okay that it takes him a little bit longer because he values depth over speed, that it's over. So those of you that are like me, that take a little bit longer, uh, we're, we're okay. <laughs> and, and I challenge you to help your students also. So you guys just said that you have 34 skills. I wonder if you just sort of doubled. You said uh, that you had one bag, so you doubled that to get two bags. So if I have 17, I'm going to double that to get 34. If I had a little bit more time, we'd talk about how you doubled 17, but no, that's for another. And I would do that with your students, and talk about how you doubled 17, because I don't want to line them up. That's somebody else's strategy. I want thinking about how you're uh, doubling 17, like doubling 15, adding a bit extra, doubling 20, taking the extra off. I think it would be better for me to model that when I'm running out of time. What if I were to ask you for four bags of skills? How many skills are in four bags? You're pausing, you're pausing. Hey, that was actually easier to do, right? Doubling 34 is not so bad. If I double 60, 34, I get 68. So if I double the number of bags, then I double the number of skittles. What if I were to tell you I had eight bags of skittles? Eight bags of skittles? Hey, doubling 60, oh, that's actually a little harder. Double, double if I double the number of bags, double uh, microphone. I, I don't know where to go, it's better. Well, I'll keep trying. If I double the number of, uh, if I double 68, double 68. Did a lot of you double 120 and then double 8? Can I do that to get 100? Let's see, 120 and 16 is 136. Yeah. Do you know why I just said that out loud? That was to help all of you follow my thinking. Actually, no. That was to help me think through the problem. Third often will act that I'm that slow. So those of you that are quicker, that's okay. And sometimes I have to verbalize what in order to sort of work through the problem. Can you, can, can you tell them to... I doubled 70 and took away four, is that okay? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Everyone go like this. Did you get sure. the same answer? Yeah, I'm just saying. Now, what I want to do in class, when you say, is that okay, I want to model a couple different strategies and, and have students consider them. And then I might say to them, which one do you wish your brain went to more naturally next time? So that's not a cut on whatever you did. That's a, oh yeah, what I did was just finding a right answer. Which one do I wish I would gravitate towards next time? 
Me, I wish I'd gravitate towards doubling 70 and getting rid of the little extra. How many extra would I have if I double 70? Four. I'd have two twice, so I'd have four extra. Mm -hmm. is, is 136 four less than 140? Yes. Absolutely. All right, so what if I were to tell you that, oh, by the way, what do you think the next problem is? Wrong, well, good try. Good guess. What if I had 10 bags of Skittles? How many Skittles would I have? Yeah, what do you mean you don't add a zero? Multiply by 10, right? So that, would that be 170 Skittles? So now I'm going to say, oh, so if I have one bag, then times 10 is 10 bags of Skittles. So what is, uh, I take the number of Skittles, and I also have to multiply that times 10. What is 17 times 10? Oh, sure enough, that's 17 tens. And 17 tens looks like 170. Absolutely. So now I've got 170. What if I were to ask you for nine bags of Skittles? Do not say it out loud. Nine bags of Skittles. Give everybody a chance to think. Don't tell your partner. Don't think. All right, tell your partner. Nine bags of Skittles. How many Skittles? Oh yeah, like really tell your partner. And how'd you do it? Okay, some of you are telling your partner, thank you for those of you that are actually good. What is um, nine packs of Skittles? How many Skittles are nine packs of Skittles? Is that 153? And how'd you do it? Yes, sir. Why? That is not why you did that. You didn't say to yourself, I do all math the way the Egyptians just do. I wondered if you said to yourself, I wondered if you said to yourself, I need nine packs. Hey, I got one and I got eight. If I added eight, one pack to eight packs, I'd have nine packs. So I'm going to add the corresponding Skittles. I'm going to add the Skittles in one pack to the Skittles in nine packs, and if I, or eight, and then I will get the number of Skittles in nine packs. Can you add 136 and 17? Is that 153? A fine way to do that problem. Did anybody use the 10 packs of Skittles? Uh, right back there. Can you yell? Yes. Go. Why? But why 17 and 170? 10 packs to track one pack gets you the nine packs. Ah, so if I take the corresponding Skittles in 10 packs and subtract the Skittles in one pack, you're saying that that's 153? Absolutely. Now, if your students can't subtract without lining those guys up, then you would want to do some subtraction strings to help those guys think about 170 by 17. And I want to build both of those. So whose strategy is better? Well, I don't really want to say it that way. What I want to say to students is, which one do you wish you would do? Which one do, your brain, do you wish your brain more naturally was inclined to do the next time you run into 9 times 17? You know when you're walking down the street and you run into 9 times 17 and you have to solve it? Which way do you... <laughs> <laughs> what do you carry with you? Do you carry one bag of Skittles and, and eight bags of Skittles to get the nine? Or do you tend to carry 10 bags of Skittles? Which, which do you, which sort of lives in your brain? 10. 9 times 17 or 10, or 8, excuse me. Does 8 times 17 live in your brain or 10 times 17? 10 times 17 tends to be the one that we can access a little bit easier, so I might not want to walk like an Egyptian in this case. I might want to use the 10 times 17. All right, but again, what I didn't just do was dog this gentleman's strategy. What I did say was excellent because I modeled it, I celebrated it, I modeled it, and then I say, 